Hello, my friends. Welcome to our monthly bonus call. It is so exciting always to hop on a call like this and see names and faces that I recognize and then lots and lots of new faces and names as well. So thank you so much for taking time out of your life to show up here today. I'm so happy you resonate with my work or maybe you're not sure and you're just sticking your toe in the shallow end, which is fine. You're all welcome here. And I hope sincerely today that you hear something that rattles you to the core of your being and that it shakes you up in a way that changes your life and that changes the way you think and that most importantly, changes the way you feel. Because typically when people show up in my universe, they aren't feeling too hot. There's usually some kind of pain going on, whether it's physical pain, even chronic physical pain, or depression, anxiety, panic attacks, overwhelm, grief, guilt, shame, all types of emotional upheaval. A lot of people end up in my universe who are suffering from, they, they have a battle going on with food and their weight, uh, perhaps binge eating or starving themselves. Uh, many, many people come to me and they have uh, not slept well in years. So so many, so many reasons that you may be here and you're all welcome. And whatever type of fill in the blank with whatever type of pain you, that might be the, the reason that you're here, just know that everything I'm gonna talk about today will apply. It doesn't matter what label you've been given. If you, it doesn't matter if you have a mystery illness, it doesn't matter if you, I mean, it matters, but what I'm saying is, is that, um, you're in the right place. Even if you don't even really know what's going on with you. Many people show up in my world because the doctors have said, there's nothing showing up on your tests, nothing. We don't know what's wrong with you. And other people are here because something did show up in a test and they were given a diagnosis and then they tried everything and did everything that they were told to do, but nothing worked. And so I suspect a lot of you, a show of hands or some thumbs up, um, if a lot of you have been down that path where you've tried a lot of things already to alleviate your pain, your patterns, your symptoms, and either nothing's worked or it's only worked temporarily, yeah, that's usually what I, what I find is that it's so frustrating because you really genuinely want to heal. And you're willing to do what it takes. And I know that was my story as well. And I spent thousands of hours and thousands of dollars and a lot of energy trying to figure that out. And it nothing worked. And I do hear this every single day from people that I work with. So my heart goes out to you, but do not give up hope because you're here for a reason. There's no accidents that you're here. I hope today you recognize the difference. The way that I approach, and we're gonna to talk today about the three exact things that have to happen if you truly wanna heal and why you might feel stuck and blocked and things haven't worked for you. And this is the riddle that most people are trying to solve. And they're usually given one piece of the puzzle, one piece only, if that, one tiny piece. And then they do that, but they don't get the results they want. So before you throw in the towel and say, I'm going to have to live like this the rest of my life, there's nothing that can be done for me, please just keep an open mind over the next hour that we're together. You can throw it all. If you don't like what you hear today here, you can press delete. You know, nobody's going to be twisting your arm here either. Uh, but I will be offering and sharing with you what has helped literally tens of thousands of people in over 160 countries right now. I've worked with people in a, over 160 countries, which 
blows my mind, let me tell you, because it wasn't you know, that many years ago that I didn't even know how to turn on a computer. And so what's happened once I figured all this out and started sharing it with the world, my whole world changed. And it's all the result of my own suffering. Literally, I'm no different than you. Over 30 years ago, I was half dead and wanted to be fully dead. And I'm not exaggerating. I was in pain from head to toe. Everything hurt. Nothing showed up on a test. Um, I couldn't sleep without either getting drunk or taking a pill. I couldn't eat without a stomach ache. I couldn't digest. I, I couldn't uh, stop the worry and the anxiety. And when I wasn't anxious, I was pissed off and depressed. But I didn't even know I was pissed off. I just felt horrible. No energy, no motivation. I didn't want to do anything. I was faking it really well. So nobody knew. And that's why it was even more difficult to convince people that something was wrong because they said, well, you look so good. Anybody ever hear that? You look so healthy. You look so good. But inside, you know, you're feeling like hell. And that was my story. And I had a lot of the material things in life to make it look like my life was working. It was functioning. It was highly functioning, but inside I was dying really. And I was so unhappy and I had no energy and I didn't want to, I, I couldn't even imagine living like that for long, a year longer. I got to a place where I couldn't go one more day, let alone another year. And I, I'm sure some of you can relate to that. And I began even having suicidal thoughts and I don't wish that upon anyone. It was a very dark night of the soul. Um, Thank God that I got help. First, I got higher help that I wasn't expecting. I really wasn't expecting. I didn't believe in higher anything. I thought that it all had, it was all on my shoulders and had to come from my brain. And if I couldn't figure it out, then there was something wrong with me, or I was weak, or I was lazy, or, you know, I was a quitter and I was raised, don't be a quitter. So I kept trying and trying and trying and trying to figure it out and nothing was working and it gets really old. So I screamed out one day while I was lying on the floor of my closet because I couldn't get dressed that day and I couldn't go to work. I just couldn't, I couldn't even muster up the will to fake it one more day and pretend everything was fine. And that day I had a spiritual experience that just rocked my world, changed my understanding of everything. And you may not ever have that type of experience and you don't need to in order to recover. So I just wanna make that clear. Yes, I got a burning bush. I am grateful as hell that I got a burning bush because I was so, my brain was just not open. I didn't know I wasn't open, but I was very close-minded. And I was only looking out one particular window. And that window was not leading me to the answers. And I was very stubborn as well. And I really didn't even want your help. I didn't want anybody's help. I wanted to figure it out on my own. But I got stuck in a loop of thinking the same thoughts, feeling the same feelings, and going around and around and around a merry-go-round and wondering why I couldn't get out of it. Because I was thinking the same thoughts and feeling the same feelings and taking the same actions. And now this may sound completely like a no-brainer to you, but if nothing changes, nothing changes. And I wasn't changing anything. I was somehow expecting everything to change, but I wasn't doing anything different. I wasn't thinking different. I wasn't feeling differently. And I wasn't open to anybody's help. I wanted a pill, quite frankly. I wanted a quick fix pill to make me magically be happy, feel better, and all my pain and symptoms go away. And I took a lot of those happy pills till they almost killed me. And I wasn't happy. 
I just became addicted. And then I was mentally addicted, emotionally addicted, and physically addicted. And that almost killed me. So I don't want that for you. And if you've been going down that path, there is another way. And now I know what it is. I know the solution. I know what it takes. And once I was able to resolve a lot of this for myself, I was shown that I had a higher purpose to help others, to be of service to others. That was not on my bucket list at all. <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing this ever. I really didn't think very often about other people at that time in my life, quite frankly. I was very preoccupied with me, 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 <laughs> and what I want and getting what I want. And so I wasn't concerned about being of service to the world. So for me to even be here, it's really a shock. It is. I still pinch myself because it, it, the whole path unfolded. And, you know, if you're here, there's a reason for you to be here as well. We all have a purpose here. And you might struggle with what that is. And that may be part of your pain. A lot of people come to me because they say, I don't know what I'm doing here. I feel like I don't even fit in on planet earth. I wanna, I just feel different. I felt different. I really felt different. I felt like I didn't fit in. Like you didn't understand me. You'd never understand me. And that somehow, I don't know. I just felt like, what am I doing here for a long time? I can tell you that that will change for you once you clear out enough of the, what's the proper word? Uh, enough of the dysfunctional thinking and the emotions that are causing you pain that are unresolved. These are the two keys that I want you to remember today. One, we have to examine our thoughts and our habits of thinking in a different way than we've been taught. I was never taught to look at how I'm thinking, examine how I'm thinking and really take a close look like you would if you were cleaning out your closets and you were going to get rid of what no longer fits you or that has worn, been worn out and had holes in it you would throw it out or give it away. But when are we taught to do that with our thoughts? Never. I was never taught to examine my thoughts. I grew up in a very, you know, in a household where everybody said they were open-minded, but they had strong opinions about what was true and what was false and, you know, what you should do and what you shouldn't do and what made you good, bad, right, and wrong. Anybody can relate to that? And that information went into my computer and I bought it. And then I felt bad when I didn't live up to it or when I disagreed with it, I was afraid to even speak up about it. Because when I tried that, I was told, you're wrong. And I got either punished or put down or belittled or criticized for the way that I thought and the way that I felt as well. And I started over time to shut down my true nature, my true thought process, my true emotional expression. And the world shut me down. It wasn't just my family, it was schools and religion. And it seemed like everywhere I looked, I could tell that I was different because I thought differently than other people. And I couldn't figure out where I fit in. And I, was, I became very afraid to express my opinions because the family and the other areas and people I was uh, brought up with, they didn't think like I did. And I questioned things. I questioned a lot of things. And I was basically told, don't question it, just accept it and do what we're telling you to do. Well, that never sat well with me then and it doesn't sit right with me now. And that coupled with the feelings that I had, 
it was the combination for dis-ease. The habits of thought that I never examined and finally just said, okay, you know, if you can't, if you can't beat them, just accept it and do as they do. And I started to shut down my, even my own thought processes. And I tried to fit in and figure out who you wanted me to be. And what that will do to your emotions is like having a twisted rope inside you. You'll feel a certain way naturally, but, it, but if you're afraid to express that, or if you know that others are going to disapprove and you confuse love with approval and you wanna fit in, you will feel like you have a twisted knotted rope inside of you eventually. And if you don't examine your thoughts and you don't learn how to allow yourself to fully express your feelings, all that energy, and remember, everything is energy. Your thoughts and your emotions are energy. They're not good, bad, right, or wrong. They're energy. Well, energy goes somewhere because we know from science energy never dies. It goes somewhere. Forever, it remains. It can change form, but it's not going to disappear. So if you have thoughts and you have emotions and you're not expressing them and you're holding them inside, it means you're holding on to energy. And it takes effort to hold on to anything. And that effort creates a tension. Tension. Well, tension is another word for stress. And we know that stress is the root of all dis-ease. You know, nature is quite simple. You're, there's ease and there's dis-ease. We give everything in between a bunch of fancy names, but it's either ease or dis-ease. And you know when you're in ease and you know when you're in dis-ease, right? You know, you can feel it. And it takes a lot of those numbing pills or drinks or drugs or whatever to numb out the feeling when you're in disease. And then if you get that numb, you really won't even be in your body and functioning very well. You'll probably be, you know, in a, in bed, on the couch, in an institution, or having someone take care of you. Because if you can't think and feel and function, you're not gonna be fully participating in life. And that's an extreme example of what can happen when we start shutting down and shutting down and shutting down habits of thought and habits of emotion that are energy that needs to be released that needs to be examined, that needs to be explored, that needs to be understood, and not just a big no across it all and hold it inside. When thoughts and emotions are not resolved and they're held in, that tension over time creates a pattern that will show up as a symptom of some, in some way, physically, mentally, emotionally. It will show up as a symptom. Ever had a headache and discovered later you were really upset about something or someone or something someone said to you? Ever noticed the connection between certain people and when you get a stomach ache or a neck ache or a back ache? Ever notice how you have an argument and then you can't sleep that night? Ever notice how something happens where you feel embarrassed or ashamed or somebody ridicules you or criticizes you and for some reason you just can't eat that day or when you eat you get, it doesn't digest properly. You see, your mind, your emotions, and your body are a complex that works together as a unified whole. We're not separate parts. We work together as a unified whole. 
the mind affects the emotions. The emotion creates more thoughts. And the thoughts and the emotions that you think and think and think and think and repeat and repeat and repeat creates a, a habit pattern that eventually shows up in the body. We tend to think that the body, these things just show up and happen some magical, mysterious way. There's no mystery. Please write this down. The body tells the story of your life. The body tells the story of your unresolved, disturbing thoughts and emotions that you have not made peace with. Your body is a big feedback machine. That's all it is. It's a blessing and it's giving you feedback 24 seven. Now here's the dilemma. The conventional way of thinking about the body is, oh, if it doesn't feel good, let's cut it out or drug it out. Let's get rid of the feeling through something that we take outside of ourselves. Whereas what I'm here to shake you up about is that I have found that that's going about it in the reverse, <laughs> the wrong way. That's not effective. And that's why so many people are suffering and now more than ever because there's more stress on our planet now more than ever. So people who had pain, now the pain is worse. People who uh, didn't have pain now have pain because of the anxiety and the fears and the, the emotions that have been going on for over two years that they haven't resolved. People that, that were anxious to begin with, now it's through the roof and they're even more overwhelmed. And so it becomes a snowball that just like builds and builds that snowball as it rolls down the hill, it just gets more and more snow. It gets bigger and bigger. And until we learn that there really is a way to resolve all of this, you'll feel out of control. You'll feel overwhelmed and you'll feel very confused because if you start going to Dr. Google, you'll see, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do this. And they, they oppose each other. You, you find this and then it's, and, and you go, oh great, there's the answer. And then you find this that says that was the wrong answer and tells you to do the exact opposite. Eat this, don't eat that. Eliminate this, no, do that. Take this, don't take that. I mean, it, if you're not confused, I, wanna, I want you to tell me how you manage to not be confused <laughs> because it is confusing. There's a lot of information overload out there and it's very confusing. And the truth is that everything in nature is actually pretty darn simple. We've gotten so complicated in my opinion with everything and every way that we deal with our physical life, our health, our happiness, our energy, we've gotten so complicated that it, it is, you know, it's like going through the jungle with no machete. You, you can't see the clear path. So I, I should also, you know, be very clear. I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to give medical advice. I don't come, I'm not here to even be part of the medical paradigm. What I share with people is a completely different understanding about how health and healing works. It's based on spiritual principles and it's backed up by quantum physics. And I didn't even know that for the first 20 years I was doing this, didn't even know it. The new science is actually ancient spiritual wisdom that's using a new language that thank God, because a lot of people really are only open to science. Well, that's okay. You can have that now. It's there in black and white, lots of evidence, lots of research. Those of you who have been around the spiritual block probably some of the things I say will sound familiar, but there are, I've also found there's a lot of myths and misunderstandings in the spiritual healing world as well. And so people have gotten confused by that and ended up actually following some things that I would, I would label as superstitious, superstitions. 
that have not been helpful. They've actually created more fear, which is no different than what the conventional medical world does too. There's just a lot of fear that ends up being perpetuated. And so that makes people lock down and do nothing because they're scared to try something because of what they've been told might happen. And um, that, that could mean either you hear something from a spiritual perspective or from a medical perspective and then scares the heck out of you. So then you, you lock down and do nothing. And obviously you guys have not locked down or you wouldn't be on a call like this. There's some part of you still seeking, thank goodness, and thank that part of yourself. You see, as long as a little voice, I don't care how quiet it is, is nagging you to do something, to keep looking, to go to one more webinar, <laughs> to go to one more document, to listen to one more podcast. See, that voice is saying, don't give up. There is a solution. And you know what? That voice is right. It's not normal to live racked with pain. It's not normal to be accepting that, oh, with age, I'm going to feel like hell and worse and worse as every year goes by, uh, that, that the disease is inevitable. This is a misunderstanding. And so if you're here today, if there's nothing else that that you hear from me, I, I wanna drop a hope bomb, <laughs> a big bomb of hope, because really there, there are solutions. And I've seen it with thousands of people. And I still pinch myself every day when people tell me, like yesterday, I did a call with a small group of people that, um, you know, they probably, they, a lot of these people were pretty hopeless. And by the end of that call, people were saying, oh my God, my pain is gone. I feel lighter, I feel happier. I, I now feel like I'm, there's a, a way, a path for me to follow. Um, they had an experience that they couldn't deny. And that's what you're looking for. And that voice is nagging you to keep going until you get it. It's not even, and this is why, you know, it's sort of a double-edged sword. We understand things through the mind, through language. So I'm here today talking and teaching, and that's all great. But until you have an actual experience, you won't really know. Knowing is different than thinking. And we're all looking for the knowing, because until you know, you doubt. The doubt comes from, well, I wanna believe that, but I really don't know if it's true. And I'm afraid it won't work for me. So I don't wanna be let down again. So I'm not gonna try. Ever have that little train of thought going on? We all have, probably this group more than most people. So until you have an actual experience where you feel something, like that's what's gonna change you. Some of you may start to feel something just from hearing me talk because along the way, what I discovered was that I became a carrier of high vibrational healing frequencies. Now that can sound very Star Trek to a lot of people. And when I first, I didn't tell too many people about this for a long time because it just sounded out there. And even I doubted it. But I saw the results, so I couldn't deny it. But I had to work through all of my fears and doubts about looking like an idiot, okay? So I didn't wanna be locked up and labeled crazy either. And it took me a while. I had a lot of programming. I come from a medical family. They take pills, shots, and cut things out. And I knew there was another way, and I didn't want any of that. And I had to find a way to live without pills because I was living on them and they were killing me. So I had to find a way to live pain-free and drug-free. Oh, great. I mean, I joke about it, but growing up our refrigerator, if you opened it and just reached in, you had to be careful because you'd get penicillin instead of peanut butter 
like it was full of medicine all the cupboards the closet my dad was a doctor and our life was centered around medicine and so that was normal there was a pill for everything well here i am again i'm going to be different i have to find a different way and i have and i haven't had a pill except for maybe a vitamin of some kind or a certain type of herb or supplement in 38 years. That's a long time, a long time. Because when I crashed and burned, I didn't go a half an hour without a pill. Every day for 14 years, I went, I was swallowing something, okay? So if I can change that, you can change. And, what I found is that it does require that we work in, the th in three areas, the mind, the emotions, and the energy field. And the energy field is the missing key that's rather new for most people to talk about and think about. And thank goodness we've entered the age of energy. So it's not woo-woo any longer. It is not, we're not going back. We're going forward and all you're gonna see and hear is more, more, more about energy, vibration and frequency. If you haven't heard that now, and I bet every one of you has, you're gonna hear more and more, you're gonna see more and more, you're gonna read more and more. Energy, frequency, vibration, it's the key to everything. I discovered this through these spiritual experiences that I had, it was revealed to me. Now at that time in my life, I hated science. I wasn't interested at all in science. I didn't want to know about physics, but what was shown to me, I didn't even realize it was physics for a long time, but what was shown to me was that everything is energy, vibration, and frequency. Everything, the walls, the floor, my body, your body, the car, Everything solid wasn't solid. I was shown, I could see it. I had an experience that was undeniable where I could see, hear, and feel that everything was made of energy, vibration, and frequency. And it's all sound. Now, there's a range of sounds that most humans can't hear. But when you are at a certain vibrational frequency, you will hear and you will see things differently. And that's what happened. I had, I believe I had divine help where I was shown a higher vibrational state of consciousness. And in that state of consciousness, I could see the walls vibrating and my body and every particle made of particles of light, colors, sound, and I could hear the sounds of the whole universe. It was really incredible. It was like the most beautiful music I've ever heard. And even to this day, when I work on people, I hear tones and sounds and different notes. And like, I am convinced everything is sound. And we know dogs, they're hearing and seeing things we don't, right? So we know that there's a range, probably a lot more than we have any clue going on, uh, on a different dimension of experience. And I think of it more like when you watch cable TV, and you're watching channel 10, but you know you have a hundred other channels that you could tune into. They're just click to a different frequency. And when you click it, you get a whole new show. Well, we're no different. I think that's a great metaphor for what's really the truth is that there's, there are other realities that are different vibrational frequencies. And somehow, for whatever reason, based on your life experiences, you seem to be stuck in a pattern of a certain vibrational frequency that doesn't feel good. It feels painful or unhappy or depressing or whatever you call it. It's not one that you like, all right? And you've experienced something else that felt better and you either want to go back to that or you want more of that or you want to change how you're feeling right and you wouldn't want to change it if you didn't know there was something else 
So think about that for a minute, because it's really a profound statement. You wouldn't want to change if you didn't think there was a better way to feel and experience your body, your life, your mind, your mental state. So some part of you knows and has either already experienced or remembers or knows there's another reality for you to feel and experience. And so that means that even if for only one minute of your entire life, you had a different experience than what you're having right now that you're trying to get rid of, that your condition is not permanent. I'm gonna say that again, and I want you to really take that in. If even for only one minute of your life, you did not have the pain, the patterns, the symptoms that you're experiencing now that you're desperately trying to get rid of, it means it's not permanent. It can and it did change. And it, yes, it changed for a reason. Now, the next question people always say is, what's the reason? I got to figure out the reason. Well, maybe, maybe not. You may know a lot of you have probably been to therapy like I did, spent thousands of dollars with somebody shaking their head, uh, telling my story, my woe is me, my parents, this, my abuse, that. I knew a lot of things. Did it change anything? No. I'm not against therapy and don't get me wrong. Some people get relief. There's a certain relief in sharing your story, but usually just talking about it or focusing on it, I have found, doesn't eliminate it. It gives you understanding, more information and awareness, but it doesn't always shift it or dissolve it or delete it. Anybody else have that experience? So if all we do is focus on what's wrong, what hurts, the pain, the pattern, the problem, the abuse, the, the, the whatever, we're focused on the symptom, not the root cause. Because if, if, if knowing what the symptom is was the solution, you all would have been fixed a long time ago, right? But when you know what the symptoms are, even have been given a label of, you know, other people with similar symptoms, been told what to do and tried those things and didn't get the change you hoped for, isn't it possible that the problem, the root of the problem, the real cause must be something else deeper, right? Very logical. So that's what I found. And what I found is that it's the two things that nobody ever asks us to examine, which is our thoughts and our emotions, both of which are made of subtle energy. Subtle, what does that mean? It means it's not as dense and, and as physical energy, physical matter, like the computer and the chair you're sitting on are more dense physical than your thoughts and your emotions. But guess what? They're made of the same thing. Your computer, your chair is a physical object, but it's not, I just said it a minute ago, it's made of energy and light and particles, right? So are your thoughts and your emotions, but your thoughts and emotions are a different vibrational frequency and you can't hold them like you can the chair and the computer. They're not as slow of a vibration, which makes the computer dense and more physical, okay? a more refined vibration that's more subtle still exists, but you might not be able to see it or touch it or hold on to it. I always use the example of an ice cube and then water vapor. They're made of the same thing, but the water vapor is more subtle than the ice cube. Well, your thoughts and your emotions are the subtle energy that makes up your body. 
your body is the physical expression of your thoughts, your dominant thoughts and emotions. Let me say that again and write it down. Your body is your mind. Your body is the outpicturing, the physical expression of the thoughts and, that you repeat coupled with the emotions that you feel strongly and that you don't resolve. You hold them, you, you, you have them, you hold that energy. And then they show up in the body as the body. You with me? Now, you're not gonna hear that on the infomercial for stomach aches and headaches. It's not the same understanding, which is why you might feel lost and not know what to do. Because we have to look at the invisible realm. That's the missing key, the secret key that's getting overlooked. That's why physics is so incredible because quantum physics talks about the invisible, the superluminal realm, the, the realm beyond the physical. This is the key to everything, including your pain, suffering, and symptoms. So let me bring it to a more practical level. So uh, let me think of a great example. All right, I love this example. I worked with this woman years ago. She had, uh, she couldn't stop throwing up. Nine months, can you imagine? Nine months where all day she would throw up, no matter what she ate, she would throw up. And nothing showed up on a medical test as being wrong, nothing. Imagine that. Now, if you're throwing up all day, something's wrong. They had no idea. And she had to stop traveling. She had two homes in two states, had to stop. She couldn't leave her house because she had to be close to the bathroom. So no more going to the gym, no more going out to dinner, no more socializing, no more fun with her husband, no more traveling. I mean, her world got really, really, really small. I don't remember how she found me, but she did. And in the very first conversation, even before the energy healing portion of the session, I started asking some questions, which is what I do. I start drawing out of you the answers that are inside of you, that I are, all of you have the inside of you right now that you may not know that you have inside of you, that tell me what your problem really, what the root of it is. See, I don't have your answers. I'm not that smart. You have the answers, and I've gotten really good at drawing out the answers, okay? That's like my ninja skill. So I start asking her some questions, and guess what I discover and what she discovers? She feels hurt. She feels offended by her the friends that she hangs around with. She feels like they don't like her. She feels like she thinks differently than they do. She feels... Um, afraid of speaking up. She feels worried about her future. She had fears about her relationship with her husband. She had a lot of unresolved emotions. And she wasn't digesting those emotions. And in fact, she was so full of emotional pain. And she didn't know this, okay? She did not have a clue that she was upset about anything. She said, Deborah, I have a perfect life. Everything's good. What's wrong with me? What did I eat? Do I have a parasite? Do I have bacteria, right? I'll do all the GI tests. Nothing shows up. Did all the elimination diets, the rotating of foods, nothing changed. She was living on air and water, still throwing up. One conversation, less than 30 minutes later, she's crying her eyes out, discovering the feelings that she had been stuffing and stuffing and stuffing to the point where the closet was full and she was literally vomiting feelings. Within a half an hour, we had this conversation. I worked on her energy field. She never threw up again. She never had pain again. She, she ate everything she wanted to starting that evening, went to the gym the next day, 
and got her life back. This, my friends, is the power of emotions, the energy of emotions that got log jammed in her gut and log jammed her life. And I could give you a hundred thousand examples of another great one. So a woman feels, no, sorry, this was a, a man. He was married, his, his wife had headaches too, but he had these severe migraine headaches, severe, like the kind where you, he said, Deborah, some days I just wanna like overdose on a drug because they're so bad. I can't live with these headaches. He would get up in the morning, he would feel great. He would go to work. And within a half an hour of being at work, this headache would come on, not just a regular headache, but like a really, really, really severe migraine that was so debilitating that then he would feel sick all over and have to go home. And this one, it was starting to jeopardize his job and he had a great career. Well, pulled out some conversational nuggets as well, and then worked in his energy field. And guess what I found? His body was telling the story of his life. He goes to work and his boss is short-tempered, harsh in the way he communicates, somewhat condescending, high expectations, all of which reminded this gentleman of his father who was abusive, demanding, commanding, and belittling. And so it was re-triggering the pain of his childhood that he had never felt or resolved. And every day he would go to work, eager to perform and do a great job. And every day, this, the fear would come back. He would see the look, the body language, hear the voice, the tone of voice, the language that was used, the, the, the demands and the commands. And he, he, he would shrink back to that little boy and felt not good enough, unlovable, unworthy, and he was sure he was going to fail because that's what he was told his whole life when he was growing up. He would get so sick and such bad headaches, he would have to go home where he was safe. And then he'd regroup and go back for another round. And this was going on and on so long. And he, he couldn't live without drugs of some kind and kept looking for what was wrong and nothing showed up on a test. Well, he did, he did develop ulcers and other things. I mean, some things did show up, but they didn't know why. So are, are you understanding what I'm saying? The body, mind, energy, connection. Sorry, the, bo the body, mind, emotion, energetic connection. It's all intertwined and one affects the other. Some people are very aware of negative thoughts of what they were, what they're, you know, thinking about over and over and over all day. That's very upsetting. Some people have no clue what they're thinking because they are feeling feelings all day. Some people are just lost in a sea of emotional pain. They are not aware of their thoughts. They're only aware of, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I can't stop crying that type of thing. And other people are not aware of their emotions. They're not aware of their thoughts, but they're aware of their body. And they're very focused on this hurts and now this hurts and now this is, you know, and so they're obsessing over the symptom that's showing up in the body. And they've never been asked to look at the emotions or the thoughts. And maybe some of you have examined your thoughts before, but that's not enough because the emotions are the gas that drives the car. And this is very, still very, very overlooked, underlooked. Um, it's, most people aren't trained, nor do they wanna go near very strong emotions. They don't want you to bring up your strong anger or grief or shame or rage because they haven't been trained what to do with it if it does come up. And everybody's biggest fear is not being safe. That's the number one feeling everyone's trying to avoid. So in order to be safe, you'll either shut yourself down, someone else might shut you down. Don't bring those feelings here. 
take this pill. <laughs> You're fired. It's unprofessional. Grow up. So we'll, we'll shut it down because people don't know what to do with all that energy. It's energy. It, think of a violent thunderstorm, hurricane. That's what it's like. And we all know that, yeah, you can go in an underground bunker, but you're not going to overpower a thunderstorm or a hurricane. Like nature, the force of nature is stronger. Well, that's where everybody gets terrified of this. And the, the conventional way of dealing with health isn't even to look at this at all. So the emotions are like the, the lost child, the orphan that nobody's paying attention to. And it is the most important key and the fastest way to release emotions and uh, to become aware of their connection to thoughts is the energy field. <laughs> and so very few are talking about that as well. When you do all three together within a short time frame, and you learn to look at your thoughts and feel your feelings, and you have someone like myself helping you with your energy field and teaching you ways to keep your energy field balanced, oh my God, you've got the key that unlocks the door permanently. Because those, that's the great trifecta, really the mind, the emotions, and the energy field. And it does take all three to really unlock that door permanently. And so if you only go in one door, you might go part way, but you won't go the full to the finish line. Or you might end up running back to shore because you say, see, nothing works for me. And it's not that it doesn't work for you. It's just that you've only gone part way. You're not all the way to the finish line. And so the answer is not running back. It's never turning around and going back. It's going further with a new tool. So the first thing I want to ask you today, and you can, you're more than welcome to type this stuff in the chat, is what's one thought that you have about what's going on with you that you know you think more than once a day? One thought about your pain, your symptoms, your disease, whatever you've been told you have. What do you think about it more than once that you know you repeat and think about or worry about or ruminate or research? Like what, do you, what keeps you up at night? Type some of those in the chat so I can see in your mind what, what's going on. Anybody? Being tired, having no energy, tired of controlling me and my day and how to find the answer, fear, more change will be hard. Uh-huh, that's a big one. I'm all alone. I don't have the willpower to do the healthy things. Oh, that's a big one too. I'm not good enough. I'm tired and scared. The pain is killing me. I'm not safe. No one is listening. Yeah. That I have too many things wrong. That's another very big one that's common. Not worthy. I should. I keep thinking about how I don't feel like this, this shouldn't be here. Yeah. What's going to happen to me? No support. I keep... Uh, mag Magicians are trying to control my mind and heart and soul mission, trying to harm and kill me, feeling alone in this, worrying too much, feeling overwhelmed, nothing has worked before, so I feel hopeless now with no solution. Oh, I can't avoid mold, mold because it's everywhere. See, these, you, you get the drift here. These are the thoughts that keep us going around and around that revolving door because you don't have the answer, you're worried about it. It's a valid concern. It's a valid concern. But you have to be up here from a higher perspective to get a new perspective and you're not up here, you're down here, swirling with the same thoughts that you've always had, trying to think yourself out of the problem with the same thoughts, won't work won't work. And those thoughts are generating the emotional reaction. 
thinking I'm all alone. I can't avoid mold. What am I going to do? Or what if this goes on forever? We'll generate an emotion and that emotion won't feel good. And then that emotion goes, oh my God, see? And now I feel really bad and scared and worse. So this is going to get worse. This is going to get worse. This is going to get worse. And so you're, you're going around a revolving door with the thoughts that create an emotional reaction and the emotions that create more thoughts. And you're ping-ponging back and forth stuck in a revolving door. That's why you feel stuck. You have to get a new perspective. You have to look out a different window. You have to have different thoughts and you have to ask different questions and you have to be willing, willing, write the word willing and underline it. You have to be willing to think new thoughts. You have to be willing to try on new clothes. You have to be willing to try something before you even feel the results of it. One of the things that I've learned is that I used to wait to, I thought if I, when I feel different, I'll try something else. Guess what? Doesn't work that way. Feelings follow the actions. You have to take new action in a new different direction and then you'll feel differently. If you wait to feel differently before you do something new, you are going to sit for a long time until your butt hurts and you will be so, you won't have any energy. You have to move your body, your mind in a new direction in order to get traction and in order to feel differently. All right, so I see the list of how you're thinking. I want everyone right now, whether you typed it in the chat or not, I want you to take out pen and paper and I want you to think of your scariest thought about what's going on with you. And I want you to write that down or type it in the chat, the scariest thought you have, the worst thing you can imagine. And now I want to ask you a new and different question. Because I suspect, tell me if I'm wrong, I suspect that when you write down the scariest thing that is going on with you, you probably think, well, why is this happening? And how do I get rid of it? Why is this happening? Why me? And what do I do about it? Is that correct? Somebody give me a thumbs up or type in the chat if that's accurate or what, what happens when you tell yourself that scary thought? So an example is my health will get worse and my family will fall apart. So what I'd like you to, to do is take that, the worst thing you can imagine. Well, let me ask you this first. The worst thing that you can imagine, has it happened yet? Has the worst thing that you can imagine happened yet? Yes or no? No. No. Right? It hasn't happened yet. No. No. Yeah. I'm getting the no's in the chat. So it hasn't happened yet. So it is a story that you're telling yourself in your mind, right? It's not something that's already happened. It's something you're worried about that's going to happen, correct? But tell me if I'm wrong. That's make-believe because it hasn't happened yet. You're making up a story that's scaring the hell out of you and it hasn't happened yet, right? Now, can you give me a logical reason why you would want to do that? Why would you want to tell a story that makes you feel terrified that hasn't happened yet. What do you think that's gonna do for you? Right, not much good. Now here's the thing, 
it is kind of natural to do this. See, your brain's wired to keep you alive. And it does that by looking for danger. And I really want you to get this because once you get this, you will stop listening to the lie. Your brain is looking for danger, thinking that if I can find the danger, I'll protect you from it. So all day long, you're thinking, oh, well, that could happen and that could happen and that could happen and that could happen, that could happen, right? But your brain isn't protecting you from that, is it? In fact, what's happening is you're feeling worse from that. You're actually getting sicker and sicker, mentally, emotionally, and physically, by that could happen and that could happen. What if that happened? What if that? What if, what if, what if, right? So when you start to become aware of the habit that you're doing, the way that you're thinking, I want you to stop and say, oh, thank you, brain. I know what you're doing. I get it now. I'm aware you're trying to protect me. Thank you. But I'm no longer going to listen to you because you're making up a story that's making me feel worse. What if once you notice that you're obsessed with the danger story, what if you asked yourself a new question? What can I learn from what's going on with me? What is my body trying to tell me? What am I ignoring? What am I not listening to? What do I need to say or do or stop saying or stop doing that would make me feel better or different? How am I using my mind to scare myself sick? What emotions am I afraid to feel? Where don't I feel safe? Who don't I feel safe around? And what can I do to change that? What's a possible solution? See, if you spend as much time asking yourself, what's a possible solution instead of, oh my God, what if that bad thing happens? And then that, you'd actually discover a lot of solutions. You'd be open to them, but right now you've slammed the window and the door shut on the solutions because you're only looking at the problem of what hasn't happened yet that you're scared of. You've narrowed the lens to the scary story that you, it hasn't happened. You, have, you won't even see all the other possibilities because you're looking through a tiny lens of, oh my God, what if that happens? You have to become aware of what you're doing and how you're participating in the problem. Now, the next thing, and that's just one piece of the puzzle that you can start to do today. You know, I could sit here and talk and teach you for months and, we, we, and still not run out of stuff to tell you. And I can't do it all in one day, <laughs> but you can start there. I've, there's a lot. If you really listen to everything I've shared with you tonight and ask you to think about, you're going to have awarenesses that will start to move you in a new direction if you're open and willing, you really will. Now, the other key that I would love to share with you is the energy healing portion. And we're not gonna do that tonight, but I wanna invite you all to come experience that because what, what it does is it speeds up the healing process because here's how it works. Your energy field, which is an extension of your body, it's the precursor to your body. We talked about this earlier. Your energy field, it has been collecting all the experiences, thoughts, and emotions that you've been exposed to since you were in the womb and probably before. And you know how when you have black clothes on and you get lint uh, stuck, stick to your black clothes? <laughs> your life experiences are like lint and they've, they're sticking to your energy field. And you've been collecting all the good, bad, and everything in between, all, everything that felt great to you and everything that felt terrible to you, all the emotions of other people, the thoughts that you've been thinking, that you've been exposed to, particularly when you were little, 
but your whole life, it's been recorded in your energy field. And just like when an MRI machine scans your energy field and can read all kinds of stuff that's going on, I have the ability to scan an energy field and feel, literally feel, where there are disturbances in that field. And remember I said everything is vibration. Well, everything, every thought, every feeling carries a vibration. You've been collecting these different vibrations. And I can feel and find where there are disturbances, disturbance frequencies, disturbed vibrations in your energy field. This is why it's so exciting to be alive right now, because finally we're talking about this in the open and it's not weird and woo woo anymore. And it's the fastest way to start to change the vibration and create harmony instead of disturbance in your field. Now, you know how when you turn on certain music, it makes you, it's soothing. That's because the music, the vibration is literally affecting you. It's communicating via the field and you're feeling that in your feedback machine, your body. Your body gives you the feedback when it's exposed to certain vibrations. That's what music, that's why people love music, certain music. It's why you love certain people. You will resonate with certain people, their vibration and yours is in harmony. It's why some people, you won't like them and you won't even know why. You don't even know them. And right away, you're like, oh, I don't like that person. It's because your vibration is not a good match. Everything is vibration. Everyone, everything, every experience, every interaction. So the key to the fastest key to changing it all is to change the vibration, change the station, change the frequency. And I became very, very sensitive over my lifetime to being able to not only feel where the disturbance frequencies are, but to bring in these higher vibrational frequencies that are super, they're just like pure love and the peace and the joy and the bliss. These are the galactic frequencies that are present in the universe. Talk about live streaming. This is the real live streaming that we all really want to tune into. And it's literally live streaming into the, through the cosmos all the time. And I became aware that I was accessing this and able to be the transmitter of this to you directly until you could do that on your own. And I started experimenting years ago and by George, it worked worked on me, it worked on other people. And that's how my whole method high speed healing developed. It's, it doesn't take time, it's, it's not slow, it's fast. It doesn't um, require taking, swallowing any type of substance or pill. It doesn't require changing your food or giving up you know, everything you like to do or love or doing endless physical therapies or anything like that. It can all be changed vibrationally. And so this is why it's just so profound and why so many people like it because it is the most relaxing way and the safest way and the fastest way to, to change some, what's going on that's disturbed. And it can catch things before it shows up in the body. I can find things, see things could be in your energy field literally years before it shows up in the physical. Remember, the physical is the last place anything shows up, not the first. And then if it's already shown up in the physical, the field will communicate with the cells of your body and it can harmonize and then the body can change as well. So it works both ways. It, 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 it can change before it shows up and it can change even if it's already showing up. And it works simultaneously on the physical, mental, emotional at the same time, because it's all interconnected. Now, some people get, they report having results on all those at the same time. Other people, it's a different, you know, everyone's unique in how they experience it. Some people will say, oh, I just, wow, my mind got quiet. 
other people say, oh, I slept finally for through the night. Other people say, my God, everything's different. I'm completely pain-free. I quit my job. I told my neighbor to go to hell, like, you know, whatever. Like some people have really dramatic, everything changes overnight and other people, it's a slower, see, you'll get what's best for you at the pace that's best for you. And I don't determine that. But working in the energy field is the fastest way and it speeds up the healing process and it can bring up, uh, people report all the time, they get, have a memory come back or they start to realize, wow, my inner guidance, it's telling me this. They'll see images or hear sounds or voices or remember something. Um, their dreams get stirred up and they start to recognize I'm receiving inner guidance that I didn't even realize was inner guidance before. Or they begin to trust it if they, they knew they had it, but they weren't trusting it. So it's pretty darn fun and profound. And especially those of you who know you have had a lot of trauma, whether it was from accidents or injuries or being in a war or um, some type of abuse or violence, this is the fastest way to release the trauma without re-triggering the trauma so that you feel out of control again and don't wanna go near it. Some people even release really severe trauma um, without even feeling like the memories come back and we're able to talk about it without them feeling any of the feelings that were associated with it. It's really quite profound. And the real beauty is that a lot of people discover that they can feel even what you would probably label as negative feelings or undesirable feelings. You can feel them and not, they won't overpower you. They won't last forever. You will not be out of control. And you can, you, you learn how to stop trying to control your emotions because that's the number one reason that you are not, that you're stuck. You're trying to control your thoughts, your emotions, and your symptoms. And when you try to stop and control, nothing releases and release is the key. You wanna release, not try to hold it on tighter. You with me? And most people say, how do I make this stop? As they're holding their breath and creating tension and trying to stop from feeling or thinking or having an experience. That's the exact opposite way to heal. It won't, you, you will just get worse. So, all right, so much to do, so little time. <laughs> oh my God. Sometimes I just think, can't I just get a disc and insert it in people's heads? It would be so much easier. All right, so uh, tonight we're, I, wanna, I wanna really wrap this up in a concise way. You have to stop believing everything you think, number one. Stop believing everything you think. Every thought you think is not true. Every thought you think is not accurate. Even if your mother told you it was, it's not. I want you to start examining and questioning your thoughts. Here's how you can tell if it's true or not. Ready for this? If something is true, it's true for everyone. Think about that. If the thought you're thinking is true, does everybody believe it's true? Because if they don't, then you just have a belief happening. It's not a truth, it's a belief, an idea that you decided to believe in. And if you don't start to question those, you will stay stuck in a false belief that could really ruin your health, your happiness, your energy, your life, your relationships. That's what I was doing. Emotions. In order to heal, you must learn to feel. Write that down. 
In order to heal, you must learn to feel. Now, if you're like me, I didn't know how good I had gotten at stuffing, denying, suppressing, and repressing my feelings. I really didn't know. I thought I was just had it all together. <laughs> yeah, till it all fell apart. So I had to learn to feel again, and that was actually frightening to me. And I wasn't, I didn't feel safe sharing my feelings. So I had to have a guide and a helper get me over that hump where I, you know, could trust another human being with how I really felt. I had to get honest and share how I honestly felt. And that wasn't easy for me. And so in the beginning, I'm so grateful I gave myself the gift of letting someone help me because it changed my life starting from the very first conversation when I admitted to another human being that I was unhappy. I wasn't happy in my marriage. I didn't like my job. Like I wasn't happy, but I was afraid to tell anyone that because I thought I was supposed to be happy and look happy and sound happy. And that I had all these things and I was, you know, had no reason to not be happy. But I was lying to myself. So ask yourself, are you lying to yourself about anything? Because your body will start to tell you that it's unhappy if you're unhappy. Now, Stacy's bringing up a good point as well. Energy has to flow in and out. There's both giving and receiving. And a lot of people are really good at giving and overgiving and overdoing. And because guess what? You feel in control when you do that. But when we receive, it's often more of a vulnerable feeling. And so some of you may be completely out of balance with your masculine and feminine energy, with your doing and receiving. And what will happen is <clears throat> a higher part of you, well, eventually you'll get out of balance to the degree where you won't be able to keep giving and being in control. <clears throat> and then you're going to learn the hard way how to receive because you'll be leveled to the couch and someone's going to have to help you. That's one way to learn, but it's not a fun way to learn. So ask yourself, how good are you? How open are you? How willing are you to receive and to give? Are you willing to receive help? Or do you think that's weak and lazy? That has to go. Are you feeling guilty like you don't deserve? on some level, to be happy, healthy, free, and live a great life. Because a lot of people tell me, well, I feel so bad. Everyone else in my family is suffering, or they're starving wherever, or I have more money than they do. Like, people feel bad about feeling good. Think about that. Do you feel bad about feeling good? If so, we need to work together and we need, I need to help you with that because many people will keep themselves in a low vibrational state of sickness and unhappiness because they're afraid of being big and shiny. Too happy syndrome. It's really a disease and, and there's a lot of people suffering from this. And it has to do back to the, what I've been saying all night. It's, it has to do with your beliefs and the emotions that are a result of them. And things that probably you were told that you accepted. You know, my parents said a lot when I was growing up, we don't want you to be spoiled. We don't want you to be a snob. So we're gonna say no a lot. Because <laughs> if we give you what you want, you'll be spoiled. So I learned eventually to say no to everything I wanted because pretty much it was a no. And then it felt really uncomfortable to even say, I can have what I want. That was, I couldn't even say that out loud when I finally started on my healing journey. I'm glad that hit a nerve, good. Um, all right, so where was I? So 
You're going to examine your thoughts this week. You're going to throw out or give to goodwill or incinerate some of those that just are no longer serving you, that you know lead to unhappiness, low energy, dis-ease, pain, suffering, and symptoms. You're going to throw them out. And here's the deal. If you're not ready to throw them out, you don't have to. What I'll ask you to do, I don't want to take anything away from you. I really can't. I just want you to put them aside for a week. Take a detox, a thought detox for one week. And the thoughts that you know, and you know what they are, that are scaring you, that are making you feel bad. For one week, you're not going to you're not going to consume those thoughts. You're not even if if they show up, okay, no problem. But you're not going to entertain them. You're going to say, nope, not this week. We're taking a break this week. I'll I'll see you next week. Just like that friend that you go out to lunch with, you really don't want to, but you go and you say yes anyway because you feel you know you know they did something for you, right? You don't want to be bad. So just for a week, nope, we're not going to go out. And I want you to notice the changes that happen when you're willing to put it on hold. Just put it on hold. I'm not even asking you to get rid of it. And then you can reevaluate and decide, do I want to get rid of that? Do I want to try another week without it? Do I want to see what happens if I go for a week, a month without that repetitive thought that makes me feel scared, bad, lonely, constricted, restricted, you get it. You will probably right away notice you feel differently. And those of you who just feel very strong emotions all the time, when those emotions come up, I want you to stop everything and ask yourself, what was I just thinking about? And I want you to start to connect the dots between you, what you're thinking about and how you feel. Because some of you are not connected there yet. You know how you feel. Anxious, scared, overwhelmed, sad. Will I ever stop crying? I want you to stop and ask yourself, what have I been thinking about? Because they are, I promise you, they're connected. And you've got to identify the thoughts that generate the feelings and the feelings that generate more thoughts. And I want you to just stop that for one week. No smoking for one week. It's not that easy. You're probably addicted more than you realize to a certain way of feeling. Feelings release chemicals. We get addicted to anger and fear and sadness and self-pity. These things actually are feeling states, chemical states that can be addicting. You may not know what to do and how to feel with the empty space. It may feel foreign. And that's where I find a lot of people run back to shore. They're, they're like afraid of the void and that it will be, feel empty forever. It won't. But you, there will, you need to create some space to even know you have a choice. Right now you're smashed up into your repetitive thoughts and feelings. You with me? All right. So you're going to de detox thoughts, detox emotions. And for those of you who want to experience the high speed energy healing, there's quite a few ways that I offer that to people. I have a limited number of private sessions for first time clients that you can sign up for on the website. I have a group program called the Pain-Free Living Program where you can have a live session with me every single week, every week, and ask questions. I have an e-course. The Pain-Free Living Program is offered as a digital home study, do it yourself, and there's a recorded healing session in there. And you can play that every day and experience it. You just won't get any support if you have questions. And I have a, a membership program where I teach classes like this every single week on Wednesdays. And once a month, I do a high speed healing as part of that membership. So, membership, pain free living program, e course, 
pain-free living program live weekly group, weekly healing session, or a private. And I do take a handful of very urgent cases as VIP clients, and I work with them usually one to three months every week, or sometimes more often if they really need it. So, you know, there's a lot of ways, there's something for everyone depending on your degree of urgency, and there's something for everyone's budget. And so if you go to my website, you'll find all of this information, or you can just email and I'm happy to send you more detailed information. Just email contact at or info at internationalcpi.com. I'll put that in the chat. And we'll send you, hang on here, info at internationalcpi.com. And either I or my team member will send you the information or just go to internationalcpi.com. And at the top, you'll see services and click on that. And you can read till your heart's content and find what resonates with you. And if you're not sure, email me and I'll help you make the decision as to what would be the best path for you. There's not, you know, one perfect right way. Everyone's a little different. So I'm happy to help you make that decision, but do something. And I hope you'll do the detox because even if you come here wishing for Deborah's magic wand, which I know you want, I'm going to make you examine your thoughts and emotions anyway. So don't think you're gonna get out of that. If you really wanna do the deeper advanced work, which I know you do because you really genuinely wanna heal or you wouldn't be here, please hear my message. Look, I know I'm late. I, I, well, I'm not lazy, but I like the easier, softer way and I'm very impatient and I wanna go fast. So I want whatever's gonna get me to where I wanna go in the fastest amount of time. That is what I'm offering. And I wouldn't be telling you, you've got to look at the mind and the emotions if I didn't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that could be the root of the problem. And that even if you get the, the energy healing and everything, which it does for some, a lot of people, everything changes. But if you don't want to bring it back, you need to understand how you might be participating in the problem you're trying to get rid of. That's why I wrote my book. That's why I created the pain-free living program. You can get a free copy of my book as well, by the way, if you don't know that, if you haven't done that yet, uh, go to the website for the digital free copy or go to Amazon for a real copy. But you're going to hear me say it over and over because as much as I wish it weren't the truth, it's the truth. We have to become a master. If we want to evolve and we're going to evolve, we are evolving like it or not. It's not about taking a magic pill and I don't want to be your magic pill. I want to help you. I want to give you a leg up. I want to get your vibration changed, but I want you to be able to ride the bike without me as training wheels. I want you to ride it on your own and say, I don't need you anymore, Deborah. Bye-bye. I'm going to go have a great life. That's the ultimate. I don't really want you around in my universe the rest of my life. And that might sound crazy, but I don't. I don't want to create a dependency. I want to help you get the leg up that you need, and then you go sailing. So you need the tools that I teach. That's why I created the Pain-Free Living Program and why I do these weekly calls and blah, blah, blah. And I know some of you hear me say it over and over and the story's not going to change. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just going to get old until you finally do something about it. So if you've been around the, here with me for a while, it may be time to take action. If you're ready, if not, it's okay. You're welcome to come back as long as you need. Look, it took me a long time before I was willing to do something. I had, I had to hurt a lot. I'm just trying to save you. <sighs> a lot of pain that, you know, it does get worse. I think you know that. It can get worse. You don't want it to get worse. And I'll end with what I started with. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So you have to do something different, think something different, feel something different if you want anything to change and be different. And I am beyond happy to show you exactly how to do that. It's what I spend pretty much every waking hour doing. And it is with great honor and 
pleasure that I help anyone who's ready. And if you're not ready, that's okay too. There's no judgment. Come when you are ready. And if it's not this lifetime, it, it, you will be ready at some point. You will. You don't even have to really worry about it. You will at some point be ready. We're all going to evolve back to what that little voice is telling you, to the bliss zone, to the peace, to the love that you all want. It is where we're headed. Some of us are gonna get there sooner than others and that's okay. It takes what it takes. So I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to say, if you're ready, let's go. <laughs> you know, It's boring sitting around with people complaining. Let's create more joy on this planet. Let's raise the vibration of this planet and raise the energy. And we don't do that from complaining. We do that by changing thoughts, emotions, and the energy field. And when you do your individual work, it cleans up the collective. What do you think the collective is made of? It's made of you and me. We're the ones polluting it. So we have to each individually clean up our act, literally, if we want the world to change. This idea that we can change the world without changing ourselves, it's, it's a false belief. We, you're here to wake up to the truth and to become and step into your full power and the true freedom you were given. And you can't do that with limited thoughts and emotions that you're stuffing. It won't happen. Freedom is freedom to fully express and follow your blueprint. That's why you're here. And that's my message. And I'm a broken record and I'm gonna continue to be a broken record. <laughs> so I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to hear from you at some time in this lifetime and enjoy the rest of your day. Do the homework, do the detox and send me an email and let me know how it went, what you changed, what you noticed and come back again. The free calls, I try to do them once a month um, or I'll see you in one of my programs, but thank you for being here today. Much, much love. Bye everybody.